Hello everyone, I'm Brad and today I'm going to talk about the pharmacogenetics of Etonercept and HLA-DRB1. Both the drug and gene are related to rheumatoid arthritis, which I'm going to call RA in this video. RA is an autoimmune disease, which means that your immune system attacks your own tissues. In RA's case, the tissue is your joints. When this happens, it causes inflammation and damages such as bone erosion. It eventually leads to severe pain and disability. So what are the current treatments we have for RA? Usually when R is diagnosed, clinicians start by using NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which treats inflammation symptom, but not the ultimate course of RA, which is that the immune system does not recognize your tissue. If your symptoms get worse, DMARD, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, are used. Methotrexate is the most used DMARD, however, there's a higher possibility of adverse events associated with methotrexate, so MTS is only used when the disease becomes severe. Etonercept, on the other hand, is another type of DMRDs. It belongs to anti-TNF-alpha drugs. It's a fusion protein with a head composed of TNF receptor and tail composed of parts of antibody Hg. It's not anti-TNF because it binds to TNF-alpha, which is a molecule released by T cells to induce inflammation of tissues and apoptosis. It's a big part of RA disease. Etonercept catches TNF-alpha floating around the tissue so they cannot trigger inflammation anymore. Although etonercept has been proved to be efficient in controlling RA, there are certain risks associated with it. So here are the top 10 adverse events after taking etonercept. And the total number of adverse events in this data set is around 7,500, while the number of patients taking etonercept in total at the time is about 100,000. So infections are a prominent reason for adverse events. This is predictable since etonercept inhibits inflammation, which is a general barrier of immune, the immune system to block pathogens. Okay, so let's switch, switch track a little bit and look at the gene. The gene I'm focusing on is HLA-DRV1. HLA is human, human leukocyte antigen. It's a complex of genes that makes a major histocompatibility compound, or MHC, in human. There are proteins that our immune system used to detect foreign stuff in our body. And DR is one of the MHC2 antigen-presenting proteins. The alpha chain here is conserved, while the beta chain is highly variable. An MHC2 antigen presenting protein is a protein on surfaces of macrophages and dendritic cells. They eat foreign cells or proteins that decompose them and present part of the peptides in surface, which then trigger T cells response to make inflammation antibodies. This is very important because a transplant rejection or autoimmune disease happens when the proteins are too different and the immune system does not recognize the tissue anymore. In terms of how HLA-DRB1 relates to RA, it's actually highly associated with RA susceptibility and several variations have been found to be more susceptible. The shared apoptotic hypothesis states that if the HLA-DRB1 protein 70 to 74 amino acids are some particular sequences, it will be more likely to have rheumatoid arthritis. So the table is like an incomplete list of these stuff. So how does HLA-DRB1 relate to etonercept? There has actually been only one study to date that did comprehensive research on association. The Criswell 2004. They treat HLA-DRB1 and LTA TNF genes to genotype RA patients with methotrexate and etonercept. And they see if the disease improved a lot within a year of treatment. They found that the variants 0404 and 0101 respond better to etonercept, with more than 60% of patients showing significant improvements. The hard thing about researching pharmacogenetics of R is that first there are a lot of genes associated with it. HLDRB is one of them, but there are also LTA, TNF, interleukin 10, TNF receptor, blah blah blah, so it's hard to single out the effect of one gene. It's also hard to get enough sample size because HLA-DRB1 is so variable that even the highest allele frequency is about like 1%. So things that have to be researched before developing legal guidelines is that the molecular mechanism of how HLA and RA are associated is actually not that clear. We have the shared hep hypothesis, but it's a complicated disease and we need to know more. Another thing is drug complication. There are many combinations of drugs you can use, and it's just hard to be experimenting every type of drug combinations. So if this pharmacogenetics can be translated to clinics, there are a lot of benefits. 
Early treatments of RA has been shown to be effectively controlling inflammation using DMARDs. It can prevent a lot of disabilities when the disease gets more severe, and it's also good if you get the pharmacogenetics to predict adverse events, since these are all really toxic drugs. The obstacles are there are a known causality relationship, and there's also a lot of genotyping difficulties because there are just so many genes. You have genotype. Okay, so that's my presentation. The picture credits, the bibliography. Thank you.